Hey guys, what's going on? True here, bringing you guys an anime review for Kill a Kill episode 12. Now this episode, as you guys can probably tell, was jam-packed. If you've seen it, it was probably the best episode I've seen to date. It really did unravel the story, which we were all, you know, stuck on. We didn't know what was going to happen. All the other episodes just kind of led up to this mystery being solved. And, you know, I was pretty surprised. I was thinking of some kind of, you know, ruthless killer. Some ruthless being that killed, you know, Ryuko's dad. But actually, it was like this muffin top little pixie girl, you know what I'm saying? She runs in here with her little uh, ponytails on. She got her, like, she has the scissor blade that, uh, you know, Ryuko's other half is. So, her dad made. And, you know, she had it. So, you know what that means is that she killed him. And then she even confronted to her within the first 30 seconds of her even talking to her. So, they had this big epic battle of proportions. They're going at it Dragon Ball Z style for a good 15 minutes. Ryoko is not strong enough to take on this chick. I don't even know what kind of suit she has. Apparently she doesn't have anything. I have no idea how she's this strong. But she does manage to make Ryoko, uh, you know, lose her blood proportion size so she cannot control Sengetsu, her, you know, her suit that she's on. So she kind of turns into a monster. The suit consumes her. And then, you know, eventually she'll have to get out of that by, you know... Mako having to, you know, remind her of who she is and everything. It was really, you know, binding episode that was really jam-packed full of action. It had action, and it had closure, it had, you know, some funny moments, it had the entire thing. They managed to fit every character in this. They even had, I don't know how you say his name, like, Sumugu, <laughs> Semuga, I don't know, he's like, he's like the big mohawk, big uh, rock, you know what I'm saying? He's got the muscles, he's got the faux hawk, and he even couldn't do a thing. He tried to do all his traps. His signature nail gun, tranquilize, he couldn't do anything. He couldn't even touch these three people. And by that I mean, you know, so there's Satsuki, uh, there's the, the white chick with the white armor. You got Ryuko with the, you know, her signature Sengetsu armor. And then you also have the, you know, the chick Harami. And this is that's a pretty funny name. And, I, you know, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, whoa, who does she work for? Because, you know, they're going to be insanely strong. She's just a henchman for them. Like, just think of that real quick. If she's just a henchman for, say, a strong organization, which I'm pretty sure I know who it is. I think it's uh, Setsuki's mom. She's, like, the leader of this entire organization world thing that he didn't want. You know, Ryoko's dad working on this suit of life fibers or anything. So if she's just a henchman, I can't wait to see who the most powerful person inside the entire show is, but that's going to be a pretty wild card to see. But I don't really want to make this review too long. Just my first kind of review, I wanted to bring into the series. I didn't want to start episode 1. I wanted to jump right in at the newest, hottest spot, so you guys can all get a feel for that, and hopefully you guys can go watch it if you haven't. Great episode. As always, guys, I'm Drew. Take care.